Yo, what is up guys? Stellboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video is a quick preview and prediction for Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios. This fight goes down on the 5th of February. And yeah, it marks the return of Keith Thurman. Last time we saw Keith Thurman fight was in his defeat to Manny Pacquiao. That was July 2019. So Keith Thurman has been out of the ring for about two and a half years at this point. So that's a considerable amount of time. Honestly, my intrigue when it comes to this fight is not necessarily the matchup itself. It's more so to see what Keith Thurman has left at this stage of his career. Uh, quite frankly, uh, if I'm being honest, if Keith Thurman has anything left, he needs to win this fight comfortably, he needs to look good, and in my opinion, he needs to score the stoppage. So there we go. Let's briefly break down the tale of the tape. We shall start with Keith Thurman. He has a record of 29 wins, 1 defeat, 0 draws, 22 of his 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Mario Barrios has a record of 26 wins, 1 defeat, 0 draws, 17 of his 26 wins coming by way of knockout. Keith Thurman is listed as 5 foot 9 and a half with a 69 inch reach, whereas Mario Barrios is listed as 5 foot 10 with a 71 inch reach. So Mario Barrios is the taller, longer guy. He's got half an inch in height and a two inch reach advantage also. But you know, Mario Barrios is the guy who's moving up in weight. He was previously campaigning at 140 and a few years prior he even competed much lower than 140 so so Keith Furman despite not being quite as tall and not as long uh, Keith Furman is definitely the more natural welterweight in this fight. Keith Furman is 33 years old whereas Mario Barrios is 26 years old and yeah Mario Barrios has the advantage of youth but Keith Furman definitely has the experience advantage going into this fight. However, there could be miles on the clock when it comes to Keith Furman. I know he's not been in so many wars, but he's had a lot of injuries in recent years and a lot of inactivity. And as we know, that can ruin a fighter. So that is something to look out for in this fight. And both of these guys are standard orthodox fighters. So now the tail of the tape is out of the way, let's briefly break down what I believe each guy should do and at the end who I believe will win this fight. I guess we'll start with the favourite Keith Furman and again for me he needs to really make a statement in this fight. Uh, again, been out of the ring for two and a half years, coming off a loss to Manny Pacquiao, he really needs to set the cat amongst the pigeons and come out with a devastating performance in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I want to see Keith Furman in this fight be a lot more aggressive than we are used to seeing. He was aggressive at points in the Manny Pacquiao fight, uh, particularly in the second half of that fight. And I think that's how he needs to start this fight. He really needs to, like I say, set the cat amongst the pigeons and make a statement. Bear in mind, it's been about seven years since Keith Furman last scored a knockout win and that was against, I believe it was against Louis Colazzo and that was a retirement so yeah, Keith Furman needs to make a statement, he needs to be aggressive and one thing I want to see from Keith Furman in this fight which is something he was doing quite well in the second half of that Pacquiao fight is body work. Against Manny Pacquiao he was landing good left hooks and right hooks to the body uh, against Manny so I want to see him try to um, implement that in this fight. Bear in mind, Mario Barrios is a tall, lanky guy. He's actually taller than Keith Furman. There's more body to aim at. So I'd like to see Keith work that body in this fight, and I want to see him be consistent with it. On top of that, I want to see a much more active jab uh, from Keith Furman, and not the type of jab that he's used to throwing uh, in his previous fights. You know, like that pouring jab to set up the right hand to set up to set up an ambush. I want to see Keith Furman take centre ring, box behind a nice solid jab and push Mario Barrios back and be the aggressor. I think Keith's got the hand speed, power and strength to do that and honestly I think it's the ideal opponent to do that against, you know. Um, 
So yeah, I want to see Keith Furman pressure behind that jab, you know, uh, move from side to side, keep your, uh, keep his head off centre line, uh, pop that jab, pop that jab, push Mario Barrios back, and then go to town when you have Barrios in the ideal position, either on the ropes or in the corner. At this point, obviously, I want to see Keith Furman go through the gears and put some hurt, put some hurting on Mario Barrios, and again, in particular, to the body. Honestly, I really want to see Keith Furman be an aggressive boxer puncher in this fight. Not a sniper, not an ambush fighter. I want to see Keith, uh, Keith Furman take the ball by the horns and really dictate this fight. And he can do that behind a hard jab. Obviously, Keith Furman in his prime always had very good reflexes, uh, good athleticism, things of that nature. And he could counterpunch really effectively, particularly with that short left hook and even his right uppercut. And the uppercut in this fight both left or right, could be very key for Keith Furman. Uh, Mario Barrios is, I, I would describe him as a jab-heavy fighter. He likes his one-two, his straight punches. And sometimes with Mario Barrios, you'll see him really overextend with his straight punches, particularly with his jab, and he'll take his head over his front foot. And he's in prime position to be countered with the uppercut. Slip the jab and come back through the middle with a nice hard uppercut. Mario Barrios is open for that shot. He's been open for that shot in several of his fights. So yeah, I'm saying that Keith needs to be aggressive, but you know, obviously build on what he does well also. And that is those explosive punches out of nowhere. You know, he can counter very effectively uh, if he's on form. So he needs to be looking out for that against Mario Barrios also. Barrios is a straight up and down boxer. Um, nothing nothing particularly special. He's decent. He's, uh, he, he's okay. He does the basics well, but I don't think he's world class. I know people gas him up after the Tank Davis uh, fight, but the truth is, before that fight, nobody was calling for Mario Barrios to fight the best guys at 140 because nobody saw him like that. Mario Barrios at 140 really was a good sort of lower level top 10 contender at best. That's his level at 140 and going to 147, I don't expect that to change. So I expect Keith Furman to really take advantage of the basic style of Mario Barrios. I'm, I'm expecting him to throw those hard counters, slip and counter. I'm expecting him to pressure behind that jab. I'm expecting him to work that body and be aggressive. That's what we need from Keith Furman in this fight. Keith's, Keith's not been impressive for quite some time, let's be honest about it. So that's what I want to see from him in this fight. As for Mario Barrios, I'll be honest, I'm struggling to see where he wins this fight. Um, unless, like, unless Keith Furman is completely shot, I just can't see Mario Barrios winning this fight. So I guess for Mario Barrios, he should really just do what is most comfortable to him. And that is boxing behind the jab. We saw that against... Um, Tank Davis, where he was having success boxing Tank uh, from distance, he was winning rounds, but obviously Tank is a much uh, smaller guy than Keith Furman, but in all honesty, I think that's what Mario needs to do in this fight, he needs to replicate that fight against Tank Davis for the first six or seven rounds, box behind the jab, try to stay out of harm's way, and you know, chances are he'll lose most of those rounds, but stay out of harm's way, pop the jab, pop the jab, pop the jab, land the odd counter on occasion, and try to also stab the jab to the body, go for the straight right hand to the body, just pick your spots, be very economical uh, in the first six or seven rounds, try to see out those rounds, don't get hurt, don't get dropped, don't get knocked out, and as the fight plays out, that's when I think Mario Barrios should actually be aggressive himself. I then think he should um, essentially try to walk Keith Furman down behind a high guard and a nice ramrod jab and straight punches. Um, but I think he needs to do that in the second half of the fight. All throughout Keith Furman's career, his gas tank has been questioned at times. And especially now with two and a half years out of the ring and coming off numerous injuries, I think it would, I, I think it would be wise to see this fight as in two halves. First six rounds, but even first seven rounds, survive, box, try to pick up a couple of rounds here and there, a couple of counter shots here and there, and in the second half, that's when Mario Barrios needs to go to work. Pressure behind the high guard, ramrod jab, try to crowd Keith Furman, smother him, 
work the body and make it a rough, tough end to the fight and see if Keith Thurman's body breaks down. That's really the only, uh, the only way I see Mario Barrios winning this fight. I don't see Mario Barrios outboxing Keith Thurman. I don't really see Mario Barrios landing that one hit a quitter. But maybe if Keith Thurman is that far gone, he could drown him in the late rounds. And that's what I would be counting on if I was Mario Barrios. I'd be soaking up what Keith Thurman has to offer in the first six or seven rounds. And after that, I go to work. I, I, I box behind the jab, behind the high guard, and, and just try to pressure Keith Thurman, you know? And especially try and work that body. As we know, Keith doesn't take the best body shot. But that's what I would do if I, if I was uh, Mario Barrios. But um, <clears throat> in regards to the prediction, I find it a hard fight to predict in regards to outcome. Despite being out of the ring for quite some time, I am still pretty confident that Keith wins this fight. It's just really how, how he does it. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say Keith Furman wins this fight by knockout late on by stoppage but I don't think for whatever reason he's going to look all that convincing in this fight I think he might lose a few rounds might look a bit rusty and I think after this fight people might be writing off Keith Furman and quite frankly I mean <clears throat> if Keith Furman looks anything less than spectacular I'd be inclined to really write him off as well at the elite level at welterweight but there we go what about you guys? How do you see this fight going? Uh, are you picking Keith Furman or are you going with Mario Barrios uh, by, by the way of upset? Share your thoughts below. And by the way, on the undercard, there are a couple of fights to look out for. You have a really good fight at super bantamweight between Luis Neri and Carlos Castro. I see that pretty much as a 50-50 fight. Luis Neri coming off a loss to Brandon Figueroa. Whereas Carlos Castro is unbeaten in 27 fights. A good prospect. So that's a really good fight. I'm looking forward to that one. But I see it as a 50-50. Could go either way. You also have Leo Santa Cruz. He is fighting a guy by the name of Keenan Carbajal. Uh, Keenan Carbajal has fought absolutely nobody. Uh, and, and this fight is being fought at featherweight. But Keenan Carbajal... He's fought absolutely nobody, has a, has a record of 23 wins, 2 defeats, 1 draw, 15 of those 23 wins coming by way of knockout, so he can crack a bit, and he is huge for a featherweight, he's 5 foot 10, so maybe if, if Leo Santa Cruz is completely shot, maybe Leo Santa Cruz has some trouble in that fight, and you also have Abel Ramos versus Lucas Santa Maria, which is a pretty good fight, Abel Ramos is a hard puncher, always in good fights, good pressure fighter. And Lucas Santa Maria is coming off a couple of good wins. He recently beat the shell of Devon Alexander and he also beat Mikael Fox. Of course, Mikael Fox most notably got robbed against Gabriel Maestra um, not so long ago. So there we go. That is the undercard. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Who do you think is going to win this fight? Put your predictions below. Peace.